<laughs> so uh, let's talk a bit about like uh, like uh, what what you find once you get there uh, in, yeah. in the in the system. So so the mo most important thing like you're not using the uh, cluster for the power of SSH ju just to <laughs> play with the SSH and the, and the command line. Uh, you're going there to do some analysis or some some science with some applications and you're hoping that you have the applications there and you you hope that uh, that you get the resources like machines accelerators so forth uh, so that you can run these applications in a more uh, powerful way so so basically you you want to do some stuff with some stuff with some programs and and here uh, we have tried to list in this page and over here we, we can first go through the basic ways of how do you find if you already have the possibility uh, well if you already have the application that you need in the system and and what if you don't what what kind of checklist should you go through so right uh, and so, i can say that yeah. most of our or maybe precisely most of CMOS time is spent trying to install applications onto the cluster because there's such a wide variety of things and so many of them are not installed and packaged very well so it makes difficulties let's say yes uh, so so and and that's why we usually try to like solve the issue for a larger group of people at the same time we don't want we uh, don't so we try to uh, of course, we try to uh, help individuals, but we also try to help the community as a whole, so that even those people who uh, those people who didn't send a ticket about certain applications, they can benefit from uh, getting the application. So first, uh, we have our applications page. Uh, like you can go there and see if there's a so software already available and if there's some uh, training examples there some of these examples mm -hmm. like if you're in other university uh, the software might might be a bit different uh, they like some of the parts might be different uh, something like that but but if you find like one like one good uh, submission script somewhere in the internet you usually can run it on a, another cluster as well if you modify it a bit so so I highly recommend also checking uh, well just googling for wider internet uh where they they have uh, uh like similar kinds of hpc clusters have similar kinds of application pages uh but but first off uh, i would highly recommend looking at your own local clusters applications page mm. if you uh, have the software if the software is available it's usually uh, loaded via this module system we will talk about the module system in a more detail later on uh but, but basically, they are a way of loading these uh, different software because we have such a variety of software. Nothing we can't set defaults. We can't play uh, favorites in mm -hmm. this game. We have to uh, be able to enable many of these s software uh, simultaneously. Uh, right. You cannot. Yeah. You should also check, like, of course, these tutorials. Uh, but and the same like if you're in Alto, some of the information might be like if you're working at the workstation or something like that uh, it might be in the workstation tutorial uh, if you can't find the software you need uh, you might want to check the usual channels where we do the communication with our users so so the issue tracker uh, the Zulip chat uh, other form with other universities you might um, uh, contact the admins. In our case, also join the guard us, ask us directly, uh, because usually uh, that uh, that you don't have a tutorial page doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we haven't seen the prog program before. It might see, just say that uh, there's so few users that we haven't yet like prioritized creating the tutorials page or updating it up to the like higher standards because. It, we just have to prioritize time uh, often in this case and and then well we we might need to uh, uh, adapt that based on the well users mm -hmm. so if the users ask for 
or something, we put it high the priority. And and throughout this process, like uh, there's few things that you should remember. Did you so, write these things to remember? Because they look yeah. really clever, yeah. and I didn't remember seeing them before. But yeah, I wrote them yesterday evening. <laughs> so, so but but, okay. but bas yeah. basically, I try to distill what 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 a good thing to remember throughout this process is that like um, scientific software, like the process itself, is collaborative. So try to work with uh, other users uh, and share knowledge and see uh, try to seek knowledge from other users as well because uh, they might have the answer that you need uh, another thing is that interesting problems draw people together independently so if you're working on a certain type of a problem it, it's most more uh, quite, quite likely that some other uh, scientist is also working on a similar kind of problem so it's a good idea to check who are these people so you can like collaborate use the same tools uh, work like you get like free free lunch basically if you mm. work with the tools that somebody else has already created mm -hmm. uh, another thing is that you should try to form connections between users of similar software so uh, many software suites uh, are like across vastly different fields they're using the same kind of software so this is especially uh like common in in statistical modeling or machine learning and stuff like that because that's that can be used in neuroscience it can be used in in economics it can be used in uh, physics uh, all kinds of fields so so if your group and your field doesn't have uh, people using the same software as you do uh, there might be somebody that works in a completely different field, but they are also using the same software. So it might be a good idea to collaborate among fields and among like look beyond your uh, research group for people of the same software. Uh, we are trying to like get this kind of a user group thing <laughs> working in the uh, Alta. So basically, like people who use the same kind of software can meet, and and we have a common uh, discussion channel, let's say in the Zuli, so that you can share information and problems that you encounter with the software, or encounter with the applications. And and the last thing is that if you don't, if you find something interesting, uh, tell people about it because, uh, like, um, if you don't share it, uh, uh, it's it's basically only on you. And, and it, it doesn't benefit the community. And, and like, if you don't know who to share it with, share it with us, because like we try to then disseminate the same information to our users. So basically, if you encounter a problem or if you find some really nice tool that works for you, if you let us know about it, we can tell the next person who asks for a similar kind of thing uh, about this tool. Yeah. And, and like uh, just a good example of this whole thing is the uh, the the question we put on the on the icebreaker and if you look at the icebreaker list here like you can see that quite a lot of people are using python and matlab and and similar kinds of tools uh like independently like I, i'm pretty sure uh, a lot of you aren't working in the same fields so if you have problems related to these uh, uh, these packages if you find some tools that are are used in these kinds of fields it's very good to communicate and and, and share their knowledge with us with other users and stuff like that because then it will make your job easier as well like like i said uh you don't want to use the your own words you mi might want to use the same words that everybody else is using and similarly with the software yeah uh, and as, as an example, like uh, like many of the most common uh, software is already installed in our systems. Uh, this is, uh, might be a bit site specific. Uh, there are some common modules that I'm currently in the process of updating, of, of trying to get these uh, even more, uh, like all of our software stack basically available on other sites as well. But uh, but uh, most common modules like uh, like Python, R, uh, MATLAB, Julia, uh, they are available. Mm -hmm. uh, some so, uh, yeah. yeah. There's an interesting question here. Can should you render Blender scenes on Triton? Yeah. Well, and this, this brings maybe yeah. the interest more sorry more interesting question is not 
is that possible? But what kind of things do you have to think about when doing something like that? Mm. Yeah, these kinds of like, yeah, these uh, it's, it's actually a very nice question because these are the kinds of questions that uh, that basically you like, I would say it's like an 80, 80 20 kind of a thing where <laughs> like 80% of my time is trying to solve these kinds of questions because Blender, for example, is, is this kind of a graphical uh, rendering software and it's it's meant for usually to be run uh, in systems with graphical uh, graphical hardware or graphical like displays basically so it, it's very hard to get them working and and that's why it's even more important to basically have this kind of a collaborative process to get it working because like the first person who gets it working it's very valuable information because <laughs> it can use mm -hmm. it can take like weeks or months to get it working and if somebody has the breakthrough of how to get it working it's it's uh, it's amazing because then yeah. well other sites are also interested in, in it yeah. uh, some and of these you, are possible to be done in, in triton as well yeah and if you do get something like this working go and post it to the issue tracker now, even saying okay these are the commands i ran and this is what i had to figure out and now it works or you know if you have a blog or things like that go make a blog post about it or whatever you know just get that information out there somewhere that it can be found and then reused. So we are at 12.43 here. Um, what should we, well. Yeah, I would quickly, men we could quickly mention like, uh, so when you're working with scientific software, it's a good idea to make it uh, reusable and share it with other people and, and of course like you don't want to share it if you're in the middle of a publication or something <laughs> it's very secret hush hush but but like if you if it's possible to get more people uh working with your project do it because that helps a, a lot of people like vast majority of problems i'm solving are solved by other people i'm just finding the solutions so basically i'm just googling stack overflow <laughs> it, it, yeah uh, <laughs> issue tracker like uh Google, crawling through github issues and pull requests and trying to solve like this kind of stuff so yeah. it's that's that's the workflow that you need to like if you go to that workflow and you you come uh you you put your software so that it, it's available for other people you will get a lot more like uh, collaboration and much more, well somebody might even use your software in their publication mm -hmm. and you get a free citation so that's really nice yeah but okay, so so we might want to do a one exercise here. So so basically, on the exercises, the second exercise might be the most helpful. Actually, the mm -hmm. first one is is, is not, if you have time, do the first one as well. But but the second one is that go to the application page of our application page or your own clusters application page and try to find if you find those software that you are actually using and try to find it if there's like documentation on that and and see if, if you if you find it and and try to like uh, look through the strategies like that I posted uh, that, that are at the top of this page and see if you can like what how, how could you work with that like yeah. uh, so, so basically do you find the software do you find the documentation if you don't where could you uh, ask for help on this Mm -hmm. Okay, so how about we have, say, four minutes or so to discuss this and then break until one o'clock. So that's 14 minutes for a combination of chatting about stuff and breaks and all that. Is that good to everyone? Mm. Well, let's hope so. I think that will be good. Um, but yeah, don't worry too much about this exercise. It's mainly more of a discussion than something you need to do. So, um, yes, we'll, check out we'll what's start with there. the hands-on modules uh, at at, uh, at yeah, well, one yeah. o'clock then. Yeah. Okay. See you later. So, welcome back. Um, there's a little bit. Well, looking at the HackND from applications, 
because if there's one final thing I can say, some of you have found that things go wrong, like information is out of date, whatever. Unfortunately, this happens. Um, and in that case, it's good to ask us rather than struggling too much. So we try to keep all of the documentation nice and up to date, but it doesn't always work so well. Mm. Okay. So, are we, anything else, any other comments? Yeah, well, I guess let's go on. So, uh, there was uh, in the in the HackMD there was lots of questions related to some of the exercises that we did previously uh, uh, about the applications, and uh, especially on the TensorFlow exercise over here. Uh, and this is a a bit of like this is uh, like a really good way of demonstrating like how uh, how we want to like work with the users or work with the feedback that we get. So basically, this is pretty badly formulated question. It's most likely, or like last year I, I wrote this because, uh, well, this is kind of a thing that usually happens with users. They want to use some framework and then they don't know how to <clears throat> use it. And for example, TensorFlow is one of them. And uh, uh, it might be a bit complicated to find from my documentation because the documentation isn't necessarily up to date. Uh, now that I looked at it, the uh, the solution that was supposed to be found was this kind of a like a, if you're in in Triton, you would do module load Anaconda to load the Python environment, and then you would do something like Python import TensorFlow, <coughs> and this would load you the TensorFlow. So this was the uh, solution, but uh, it it really shows that the documentation necessarily or the exercises here aren't necessarily the most well best thought out of so we'll have to adapt but but this is the kind of thing that is very important to like uh that we get the feedback because then we we like the like what radovan talked previously about how to formulate your question and how to think about the problem uh when you're supplying the question uh in in our case, it's it's a bit of other way around. So we are dealing with these programs all the time. So for us, we constantly have to work to think about how somebody who has never seen these programs would see the problem. And that can be as complicated, almost as complicated as the other way around. So so basically, do give us feedback on what is complicated, what is not clear, and we will try to adapt it because then we know that, okay, like we thought about this problem differently than you did. And that is very important. But OK, let's we can now move forward in our schedule. Uh, so we we will uh, uh, move. Uh, we will talk about these modules and, and software loading uh, at the later later on. But we first want to uh, work with some other other topics. But we'll, we'll return to this TensorFlow thing in a in a different kind of way later on.